Welcome to our tutorial on the Measure tool. Let's bring up the Measure toolbar first. View, Toolbars, and Measure. The first tool is Measure Between. Let's activate it. This active icon indicates that Measure Between is the active measure definition. Right here we can apply filters to selections 1 and 2. Let's choose any geometry for now. Let's choose this edge and this edge. And here's our measurement, 6 millimeters. If I check Keep Measure and click OK, the measurement remains visible even after the definition window closes. Let's double click the measurement to open the window. This time we'll change our selection. Press the Customize button. This gives us additional options. Currently, Maximum Distance is checked, and the other options are grayed out. That's because we are editing our measurement. As you can see, in the Measure Between dialog window, the Keep Measure checkbox has disappeared. All right, let's cancel out of this for now, and Control z out of this. Activate the Measure tool again, press Customize, and you see that the Minimum Distance and Angle checkboxes are now available to us. Let's say I select Minimum Distance, Curve Length, and Angle, click Apply and OK. Let's select this edge, and this edge. We now see that the Angle and the Minimum Distance are displayed. Let's cancel out of this and reactivate the command. Our next definition mode is Measure Between in Chain Mode. Let me show you what this means. Let's select an edge, a second edge, a third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and an eighth edge in our chain. And as you see, we have our measurements displayed. We can drag our measurements for better visibility. Let's cancel out of this and reactivate the measure tool again. We'll look at the next definition mode now, measure between in fan mode. Here I'll select the first edge the second, the third, fourth, fifth, and so on. Each of my measurements is displayed. The value represents the distance from the first edge I selected. Let's click OK. Let's Control Z out of this. Let's activate the tool and explore our next definition mode, Measure Item. For the Selection 1 mode, we can choose a number of options. Let's choose any geometry. When I drag the tool over a part, it selects the geometry. For example, let's click on this face. It'll give me an area of this plane. If I click on this edge, it gives me the radius and the center point position. If I click on this line, it gives me the length of the line. Once again, we have Customize options. We can choose customization measurements for points, edges, arcs, surfaces, and volume. Let's close this for now. And let's select the Point Only selection mode. In this mode, we won't be able to pick up anything but points. Let's say I select this point. The tool gives me the X, Y, and Z coordinates of the point. These coordinates populate the results area in the Measure Definition window as well. 
The next measure definition type is measure thickness. When I click on a part, I see its thickness. Here it's 5 millimeters. If I click here, it's 14 millimeters. In the results area, I see the thickness value and directional vectors, as well as the coordinates of the point I've selected. If we check Keep Measure, our measurements will continue to display even after the definition window is closed. Let's take a moment to explore the last definition mode, Measure Inertia. We've got two options, Measure Inertia 3D and Measure Inertia 2D. Let's click on the part. There are a number of parameters in the Measure Inertia definition window, center of gravity, area, mass, and so on. The second option is 2D. Let's select a face. And here are the parameters that apply to 2D measurement. And let's cancel out of this for now. By the way, I forgot to show you, here we can also select an entire part body. We'll receive the volume measurement. Let's cancel out of this as well. And this concludes our tutorial on the measure tool.